Hello and welcome again to this new tutorial and we will talk about classifying symbology. In this terms, not dealing with labels or something like that, but having a classified or a categorized view on our data. In fact, we can differentiate, of course, labels to represent some proper attributes, but wouldn't it be much cooler to have not a shared symbology for every layer. And if you remember correctly, we have used such a categorized view on the streets already. What we have done there was, if you remember, that we have three different um, symbologies applied to the street layer according to an attribute. And we will do so by using the land use um, layer here in our current QGIS project. Just double click on it and in the past, we were dealing with single symbols only, but now we will switch over to categorized. And you see now categorization always asking, well, what value should I consider? So which field should I consider? And we will go for the uh, for start. We will use the attribute called lend use. And um, now can well, well, he will look at the attribute land use and as it is a nominal feature we will have only yeah shared items in there like land use i don't know recreation land use building land use water whatsoever land use yes depends really on the open street map data model in the end and um we can also recheck this no no not yet now but once you have that he will try to use a common a common symbol, in this case, is symbol fill with these values, and he will apply a different fill color to them. So let's press on OK for the moment. We will assign random colors and say classify. What we can see now is that he has checked the attribute table for all the land use entries, and he found those results. These are quite a lot for category cartography product so in terms of if you would like to print it out you should be you should have at, at maximum eight categories to, to visualize because sometimes it's hard to, to differentiate one feature from the other let's have a look on the color codes from cemeteries to, to conservation the palish green well it is really near to each other from a color code perspective so but we can also check every item here and by double clicking on the symbol your farmland farmland double click on it you can easily adjust the symbol uh, the symbol that should be used for especially this item here and you can also play around with the legend so symmetry let's make it an upper c or village green there is uh, a blank in there so we've adjusted this and all other values sometimes uh, sometimes they are null values so where is no land use filled in let's say here other okay that's it for the moment just click on apply what we can see now is that we have different colors for different items right and also from the layer point of view it's easier to work with the layer because we, now we can say well residential i don't want to have um, a view on the residentials right um let's zoom out a little bit then there are some i don't know what is this is farmland farmland is now in this freaky blue let's switch over to noise fill in green pattern dot green let's use this one so now we have a categorized view Sometimes you would not like to uh, assign random colors because there's some hidden meaning in the in the color rims. So you can also switch to color rims, predefined color rims, and you can create a new color ramp by choosing a color one, a color two, and then uh, you can assign different levels. Um, we will go with the no, not with the custom color. With this custom color ramp, we will assign a color ramp of greens. There we are. And I'll reclassify again. Delete all, classify all, because I have somehow altered this one symbology. And say upper C. Click on apply once again, and there we are. 
works really good is a great way of visualizing visualizing different categories but as said um be careful if you have a layer or an attribute that holds a lot of different information so there are no real categories in it because you have uh yeah it's like using using a categorized view on street names that does not make any sense right so let's have a look here go to roads double click categorized view on the value name searching takes too long we'll go with name all right say random colors great classify well you will get a warning already high number of classes classification would yield 1500 entries and of course we don't want to have that in a map we would like to print out maybe afterwards so let's press on okay here for the moment the categorized view is works good on nominal data but then there are other values as well or other ways of visualizing your features according to an attribute because there is a, a styler called graduated symbols sometimes values are well they they are not nominal but they are like values integers or decimals depending on the size of an item of an area of the item or population density at a point or in a polygon or whatsoever so therefore we will use not categorized symbols but those graduated symbols now at the time uh, at the time being there's only one in one number field which is the ogc fid does not make any sense to visualize this one but we will work with the field calculator once more and just um right click on it go to the attribute table here and we will create a new field using the field calculator there we have it we will create a new field with the name area and it should be an integer right well let's say well maybe decimal because area values should be not integers we will go with it length of 10 and precision so the numbers of decimals is 10 is 3 in this case and there's a function called area so what to how to calculate area right and this is an, an attribute of the geometry so it's not a real calculation it is all already in the data so we'll go with area and simply press ok we'll create a new field called area decimal number with three uh values in the decimal mostly decimal places click on okay and let's scroll to the right and there we are so these are now the areas for our for our features so look there this first volume quite large area let's use a smaller area here this is a reservoir with 131 square meters we will first save the values switch off the editing mode let's zoom to this reservoir and now we have worked with this tool here already by measuring a line now we will measure an area this is had to be in square meters and we will work right away so click every time with the left hand side there we are so we will have proper snipping here on the data that is quite good or was proper snapping on the data that is quite good already and here we have it 131 square meters and if we check with the attribute table no that's the wrong one if we check with the attribute table here go to the right 131 square meters that's fine for the moment so now we have an, a decimal number which we can apply or which we can use then for not a categorized view but for a graduated view once again go to classify we also need to make sure that we have area selected of course let's choose classifier now what is it doing 
Well, it uses quantiles, equal, equal counts. That means in every class, in every class of those five classes, there is or tends to be exactly the same numbers of features. Works quite good, but so from a from a cut to, from a geostatistics perspective, that's a valid choice. But if you have a look on the legend entry, so are you really interested in areas that are smaller than ten thousand two hundred sixty square meters or all those, those strange values? The, the people and cartographic products tend to be. If you choose a gradiated view, that is also here not gradiated. It is, of course, a categorization. So we are splitting up the data in buckets. And if you would like to show them to people, it always makes sense to well maybe use pretty breaks, All right? Click on classify again, and you can see that there are values here up to two hundred thousand or twenty million, I think, something. A really large number and then the breaking of the classes are yeah, somehow easier to read and easier to understand you can also check always with the histogram load values and now you can see that we have not a value normal distribution or something like that but um, a very left-handed distribution so there are a lot of features with small areas and there are a few with really large areas right so there's uh, some values for the mean value, standard deviation. You can turn it off, on and off again. So for the classes, there are ways to, to play around, right? So you can we can also check okay, with equal intervals. You can apply the numbers of classes you would like to show. But here, same rule applies to the categorized viewer. Do not use too many classes, right? And use maybe. A lower number of classes so it's easier to read for user to differentiate between those values what we are doing now is we are saying well uh, smaller areas tend to be not that dark green and bigger areas are dark green so let's click on apply and then okay let's zoom out here turn off the water layer and now we can see there's this large area here in the upper left corner and there are then those smaller areas and you also can of course adjust here the uh, the layer style well it tends to be these are empty classes right so there's no real value in there and empty classes are always bad classes. So there's just this one big entry here, and then we have all the other um, land use polygons there. So this is not a good somehow way to break up the data. And then there's this natural break uh, approach. Uh, let's have a look here again on the on the the values and you can also see the breaks in it so there are a lot of breaks so a lot of different color codes in the leftish part of the histogram and there's just one break on the right right so it tends to split it up much better if we check here with um equal count classify again go to the screen it is even not worse, but it's harder to read where the classes are, right? So if you um, I've just, unfortunately, I've applied them, yeah, I've changed one class, but um, let's go back again, say classify, go to the histogram. Now you can see that there are a lot of classes in the, in the left part of the histogram, and there's just one class in the right, right? And everything else is in, in between. So let's go and say OK again. And now we still have the proper visualization. So there are there are entries or features in every class of the graduated symbolizer. So that's yeah one way. Once again, keep in mind do not use do not use too many classes. Try to have proper breaks in the end. Breaks that are easy to read and they should be somehow 
meaningful. Another way of um, classifying or splitting up your data is a rule-based renderer. So let's check this out. What does this mean? Go to rule-based and what is done now? It has already translated the rules that have applied to the last visualization. So it says, well, there's a rule for the first entry, which is, of course, area should be between 131 and 6516. So the area should be greater or equal to 131 and so on. So these are the rules that apply here. Um, but we will use not the same rules. We will apply our own set of rules. And if you have or if you have watched the um, presentation already, there it is set just to apply three rules, right? Land use should be residential and name should not be Swellendam. Swellendam was a municipality we have to, uh, seen in the, in the center of the map. So what we will do now, we will yeah, remove all the rules. So just click on delete. 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 Once again. Once again. Once again. Click on plus. And we have a first rule that is, according to the use, it should be residential and name is not residential. So let's label that as residential, right? There's a filter. We will use the um, expression string builder. Just copy paste this. So land use, the attribute land use should be residential and name should not be residential. Press OK. Residential area as well. Let's go with palish gray. We'll use this one. This is cool. Okay. Go there. And then there's another rule. The other rule deals with land. You should not be residential, and area should be greater than 6,000 or 605,000. So, non-residential. Filter again, land use should not be residential and area should be bigger than 605,000. Non-residential, well, let's use this one here, okay, and then we have Swellendam. Name equals Swellendam. That's easy to work with. Swellendam name equals Swellendam, and we will go with another color. Let's use this one. Click on Apply. Click on OK, and there we are now. So now we have Swellendam in the center. We have the residential uh, residential areas that are not part of Swellendam in the south and in the north, and we have all the other non-residential areas in this blackish line symbology. So check the places again. And so, well, well, the orange is a little bit too too hard for the eyes. So go with the Easier to read, yeah. That's it. So this could be a way to categorize data, right? And what we have learned today is, first of all, there is not only the single symbol way of visualizing data, but there is also um, a style type called categorized. There's a style type called graduated, and there is a style type called rule based. Categorized uh, styles can be used, especially for nominal data, where you have categories inside the, an attribute. Graduated symbols can be used if you have numbers apply or numbers attached to an attribute, like area, population density, whatever. And rule-based can be everything. So rule-based can be a mix of integer or nominal data and non-nominal data. And in the next session, we will explore some ways how to print this out. So we will create a proper map 
as a PDF or as a web. We will see. Thanks again for watching. Take care and goodbye.